how it's going to be done. Right? everybody. Uh, my name is Jamie Southern and if you know me I don't love attention so this is um, gonna be interesting for me to do live videos but I love it and I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about um, why I've created this Facebook page and then trying to build this community. Um, 80% of the information that's gonna be coming your way and offered to you guys is the stuff that goes beyond your lessons. You may be a beginning pitcher just trying to learn or you might be an advanced college pitcher even that um, we just want you to think more, bring different opinions your way and not the mechanics and spin, right? That'll just be like 20% and it's important and we're gonna give you secrets from some amazing All-American pitchers of how they throw their rise ball, how did they, what did they focus on to throw an awesome curveball. But the majority of it is going to be to get you to improve and step up your game as a true just pitcher. How to think about batters, communication with your coaches, how to talk to coaches um, at, recruiting camps or just the recruitment process and give you some experts to give you guys all the information. So why not, right? It's not done. You have your lessons, but there's not enough time and lessons to go over all these little things. So be on the lookout every week because it's going to be important. It's going to be something that you might need to hear or hear in a different way. Because the one thing that will hurt you as a pitcher is if you go to your same pitching instructor your entire journey, you're missing out on so much opportunity and growth and opinions and different ways. Because as a pitching instructor myself, I do not teach the same way to every single pitcher, right? My pitchers don't throw the same changeups. My pitchers don't throw the same pitch, maybe, um, their hand sizes are different. We have to grip the ball differently. So just think there's more out there in this world and I wanna give some of that to you along your journey. But if you watched the video this past week, um, it was about learning who you are as a pitcher and knowing why it's important. And I wanna kinda of just share on this live call about how the pitchers at my school and college have worked through that and kind of give you some of their numbers. So if you've had a chance to do the workout of the week yesterday, or maybe you're doing it tonight or gonna try it this weekend, um, I just wanna kind of give you some ideas and maybe learn how to read your results and like what the pitchers would see from the results and what from a coach's standpoint, what I see. So you can kind of like look at your numbers and kind of compare. So I'm going to give you a pitcher A and a pitcher B, and they're two different types of pitchers, and you'll see why. So there, one pitcher, pitcher A, she throws, she came in, so we did these numbers, the second practice of pitching. So I'm new to the school, I want to kind of get to know these pitchers, and so I say, listen, I just want to see what, what we have to work with and what your consistency level is and all that. So you're going to throw 10 of each pitch and we're going to give you a check if you have a perfect pitch. Now a perfect pitch means that a curveball is going to actually break as well as hit the location spot, right? So it's going to start on that outside corner and maybe break away um, from the plate and that would be considered a perfect pitch at a knee height or something that is a swingable called strike, right? So her rise ball, she threw a change up, a curve, drop, and screw. That's what she, she comes to tell, to tell me that she wants to, to, to show me. So her rise, we had a four out of 10. We had a six out of 10 on her change, a one out of 10 on her curve, a two out of 10 on her drop ball, and a three out of 10 on her screw ball. So now you're looking at these numbers and you're like, those aren't really high. 
right? And they're not. I'm kind of like, oh my goodness, she's a little bit all over the place. And that's okay because it's day two in August. But for the advanced pitchers or for maybe like um, pitchers that have multiple pitches that are movement pitches, we also did, um, I put, if they missed it, I would put an L or a B. Now I put an L if they threw a curveball and it didn't break, but the location was in a great spot where they're not gonna get hurt, right? Like it went to the outside part of the plate and it's worth something. Or I would give it a B if there was break, she could throw it and it would move eight to 10 inches, but it didn't start where it needed to and finish up. So she had the movement, but not the location. So once we considered kind of those, the location and break, her numbers went to six to 10, 10 out of 10, four out of 10, six out of 10, and five out of 10. So we're a little better, but not a lot, right? So it's still some inconsistency. So when she looked at the numbers, she was a little disappointed, which I would be too. And we could say, okay, your curveball was one out of 10 and you, Three, three of the pitches you hit the location. So as a coach, I'm like the curveball's out right now. That's your least um, consistent and breaking pitch. We gotta leave that one. So we looked at the rise ball and said, okay, there's some potential there. You had a couple pitches that really broke. They just were really high and we have to learn to start them a little lower. And as well as her drop ball. She had three good drop balls that the break was amazing, but it was too early and so it would just go low. So for her, she was able to say, okay, I really want to get my rise and my drop a little bit more developed and consistent because it's halfway there. So then that could say, okay, we can have a rise ball and a drop ball and she's 10 out of 10 on her changeups, right? So she's now gonna be in a great position. We're gonna drop the curve until we can improve the rise and the drop. And the screwball, we're gonna just kind of toy with it. We're gonna work with it and see how quickly it comes because the screwball was something that she hadn't thrown for a long time. It wasn't a natural pitch to her. So it's like, let's give it a, let's give it a chance. Okay, so pitcher B. She started with her curve, rise, screw, and an off speed. Those were her four pitches. And she started with a seven out of 10, five out of 10, five out of 10, five out of 10, okay? But with her locations and her break, she had a nine out of 10, nine out of 10, eight out of 10, seven out of 10. So when I look at picture B, I think consistent, right? She's not gonna get hurt. She's placing that ball or it's breaking enough where she is not missing on the plate. I also see her as a pitcher that I can bring her in and she can continue to keep us in ball games because they're not going to be big misses where they're going to get a home run or a solid contact hit, right? Um, so when she looked at that, she was like, oh, five out of tens. I got five out of tens on three. And I said, yes, but your locations were there and her screw balls she missed, but they were rise and her rise balls that she missed were screw. So we're super close. So I just want you to look at your numbers and see what you can find from them. And maybe you did it and you were like, oh, it was an off day. We lifted at school, my legs were shot. That's okay, do it again. And when you do it again, the numbers don't lie. If you need to do it three out of 10 and then average them, go for it. They're your numbers and you get to look and analyze to see who you are as a pitcher. We do not have to have all five pitches, okay? It's cool to have five pitches, I think, going around and saying that you do, but you may find, like pitcher A, that you can only truly have a good curveball one out of every 10 pitches. That's not, that's not a good pitch. It's not a good pitch for you. It's getting hit. It's giving you balls. You're getting behind and then they're gonna hit you. So it's not always easy, like I said in the video, to like have to look at your numbers, right? But they're gonna make you better. They are gonna make you better. So after you look at your numbers, I want you to ask yourself, what do I see? What would my coach see? You, let your coaches, let your parents see because 
the number one thing that it did when I didn't know these pictures, but for two days, I kind of got to know them a little bit more, right? And so if I'm the coach on your travel ball team and I don't really know consistency wise, like where you're at or what breaks, how am I gonna call a good game for you? And as a coach, you might have three or four pitches on your team, pitchers on your team, and you're sometimes they call the same way for every pitcher. And you're like, why are they calling rice balls for me? My rice ball is not very good. I'd give it a C plus. It's average. Nobody swings at it. It just goes high. And then you have another pitcher that that's their pitch and they're not even throwing it because he, I mean, right? Like a coach should be, should be specific to calling the game for the pitcher. But if they don't know who you are, cause you don't know who you are, they're doing the best they can. So if you can get this information to say, this is what I am. I did it. I did it in January. I'm going to do it in February before this, we start the games. And I want to give this information to you. I think these are my top three pitches. This one I can use, but ugh, it might get hit. And if it does, let's, let's cut it out right now. The coach is going to call a better game for you. So it can help the coach. It can help you. And then what was the best part of this was my college pitchers were like, they knew what to practice. They knew what to work on and not just go through their pitches. So ask yourself, what do I see in my numbers? Which pitch is hurting me the most? Um, how can I use these numbers to practice more effectively? And then I encourage the pitchers that have breaking pitches to write the B and the L because you might see that you miss this pitch every single time, but the location's right. So that tells me right there, I really don't have a curveball because it doesn't break. And if I want to say that I have a curveball, I actually have to make it spin and move. <laughs> so I've got to work on my spins now. Okay, I know that's a lot of information, but I wanted to be able to like give you that workout and then apply it and show you how I use the numbers from my college pitchers. So they did this in August and then they did it in November right before Thanksgiving break and their numbers were so much better. And so it definitely gives them that goal to set and to feel accomplished, feel more confident in their pitches because they see them working right and now they see them on paper and it, the numbers don't lie so i encourage you guys to to do it to do it we have the link um that you can print out on on the uh, this facebook page and so you can use it there or just type them in your phone it doesn't matter and take that back to your pitching coach say ah, these are my numbers what do you see right the more feedback you can get the better you're going to be um i like I see all these comments and I'm so excited. All, all some of my people. Um, thank you guys for coming. This is so nervous. You guys know me the most. And so it's like, ah. but um, I really am putting myself in an uncomfortable position for growth too, because I feel like I have a lot of passion for the position and for the sport. And I really, truly, honestly want to give that to you. And I look back on my pitching journey and the growth that I had, I mean, right? I could see myself, I was good. But if I knew then what I know now, I could have been even better. And you shouldn't have to wait and learn yourself. And so I think that's where I wanna be able to give to you. I want you guys to think beyond the lessons, beyond the mechanics and spins on how to truly get better. So if you guys have any other questions, like please message me. Um, we are about to travel in the next month and I'll be on the road and I'll have time to like get back with you guys. And so truly, like I really care about pitchers and getting better. And so if I can't answer a question, I can find one of my former teammates that can, but get better, get out there and um, look forward to the spring season. Um, thanks. <laughs> I am nervous, but okay, thanks for telling me I'm doing all right. Um, well, I don't think there's any other questions, and so I guess this is my first live, and hopefully it was an effective one for y'all. 
and I will see you guys next Wednesday. We have a really good topic next week um, on kind of, it kind of goes with this, but it's now it's like finding your game plan. And it excites me because when pitchers email us interested in the school or when I talk to pitchers at clinics, I'll ask them like, well, who are you? And like, what's your game plan? Like, what do you, who are you on the mound? And they're like, I've never thought about that. <laughs> And so we're going to give you the information so you can think about it. And remember, it evolves, right? Two years ago, I'm a different pitcher. I, I'm a different game. I have a different game plan. So we're going to kind of try to get you thinking a little bit more, get you thinking deeper. So if a college coach asks you those questions, you know, you know what it is. And if you're a beginner and you throw fastballs inside, outside and have a changeup, that's okay. What's your game plan? Right? And I think this is a good topic for coaches who call pitches because it's going to get you better too at, at your position who, unless you were a catcher in college, baseball or softball, like you've never probably had to call pitches. So um, grow with it and get better for your pitchers. And so I encourage all the pitchers and their parents to like invite their coaches on because they're the ones that need to help. They're out there on the field with you. So tag them, invite them, and let's continue to get better. So I will see you guys next week.